I saw Old Boy in theaters the other day during its 20th anniversary re-release, and it featured a very interesting chat between director Park Chan-wook and another filmmaker wearing a skirt. In this conversation, the skirted filmmaker asks about how Chan-wook plans and structures his films. Are you more like intuitive when you show up, or do you plan a lot beforehand? Um, what do you like to do as a filmmaker? And in Chan-wook's response, he references The Corridor widely regarded as one of the best examples of a one-take fight scene in all of cinema. As he responds to a seemingly unrelated question, he explains that the structure of this fight scene, in large part, was born from laziness. So he chose to do it in one take. My friend and I were shocked to hear this. Everyone remembers when their English teacher in high school asked, but why did the author make the drapes red? What do they represent? And they thought to themselves, I don't know, maybe the drapes are just red. The reveal that one of the most memorable and artistic scenes in film was born of laziness feels right up that alley. At first, I was a bit disappointed. I had hoped to hear that this director had leaned on years of experience and a strong artistic vision to decide how to make this scene happen. But my friend immediately reminded me of an interview where Kurt Cobain says that his songs don't really have any meaning. I've just noticed that people expect expect more of a thematic angle with with our music. You know, they always want to read into it. And before, I was just using pieces of poetry and just just garble, just garbage. You know, just stuff that just would spew out of me at the time. And a lot of times, when I write lyrics, it's just at the last second because I'm really lazy. He can be found making similar statements in various interviews, expressing a sort of general sentiment that he had no intent to create meaningful lyrics when he wrote his songs, and that they were primarily incidental. And this got me thinking, how many other prolific pieces of art have almost no intended meaning? Is beauty really in the eye of the beholder? Is art any less powerful if its meaning is entirely fabricated by the public's reaction to it? Let's explore the idea of accidental art and talk about why the drapes being read wasn't on purpose, but still matters. J.R.R. Tolkien is famous for his dislike of allegory. He was often accused of utilizing allegory in his works, with people claiming that the One Ring represented the atomic bomb, that Frodo was Jesus, and that the whole story was a blatant allegory for World War I. He detested this accusation and made the very clear differentiation between allegory and applicability. Allegory, he said, resides in the purposed domination of the author, while applicability resides in the freedom of the reader. That is, allegory is intentional, applicability is incidental, and in fact, unavoidable. People interpret everything they see through their own lens of experience, and art is no exception. This is the reason it's so difficult to interpret history. It's nigh on impossible to read about the Roman Empire and not make inferences about why they did what they did using our own current logic and values. And it's impossible to watch a movie, read a book, or hear a song without viewing it through the lens of what is currently important to you and the society around you. The Corridor was not intended to be one of the greatest one-shots in cinema. It was obviously not intended to be bad, either. Chen Wook intended it to be a good scene, but its power lies in the interpretation, not in the intent. And so, out of laziness is born art. To return to Kurt Cobain, here's another interview where the interviewer asks about the meaning of the name Nirvana. That it was, uh, Nirvana means freedom from pain and suffering in the external world. That's just that's the Webster's it. Dictionary. I mean, that's just right. right out of the Webster's Dictionary. And Cobain has no idea, so the interviewer starts telling Cobain the story behind the name of his own band, and Cobain responds, sure. Now I remember. Yeah, that's why. Sure. Okay. Does this mean that this isn't the actual story, and he's agreeing to get out of the interview faster? Possibly. Does it mean he's accepted the fact that he no longer has any control whatsoever over how people interpret his words? Maybe. I love this example because it is quite literally the consumer telling the artist to their face what their own work means. It's the most extreme version of interpretation versus intent, applicability versus allegory. But, Mr. King, the drapes were clearly red because they represent the strong ties between family and the choices that the character is about to make to leave that family behind, right? If you're Mr. King, what do you say? No? To what end? This person has enjoyed your art and has found deep meaning in something you maybe didn't even think of. Does that matter? 
Tolkien further expands on his separation of allegory and applicability by stating that, while an intentional allegory is a failure, any very good story will almost certainly be unintentionally allegorical, and therefore applicable. Which brings us to my next point. In the same way a reader or listener or watcher cannot sit down and consume a piece of art without applying their own personal experiential filters to it, an author, songwriter, or director cannot consciously create a piece of art without subconsciously applying their own as well. As I was researching Kurt Cobain's interviews, I read a blog where somebody pointed out that while Kurt Cobain claimed his songs had no real meaning, he somehow managed to sit down and write about the same topics over and over again. If everything was truly random, why do so many of his songs discuss drugs, mental illness, and abuse. This is not to say that Kurt is lying about his songs not having meaning, quite the opposite. If we take him at his word that he never intentionally put meaning into a lot of his lyrics, does the art not become even more telling? This unintentional allegory, this incidental meaning, in my mind, seems the purest possible version of art. We've all seen art we describe as too blatant, too obvious. We use the phrase beating us over the head with a message. There's something disingenuous, off-putting about these types of art, and we're naturally repulsed by them on some level, no matter how beautiful they are in other ways. We praise subtle messaging, insidious meaning that takes a backseat to the story of the piece and yet cannot help but be noticed. We praise the artist for being able to create such a perfectly subtle message. But what if these perfectly subtle messages are more examples of incidental art, applicability rather than allegory? Maybe when artists stop trying to create art with a certain meaning, the meaning begins springing to life all on its own. Perhaps the greatest artists are those who aren't trying. They're trying to make art, of course, but they're not trying to tell us anything. They're simply creating. And in creating, pieces of themselves escape into the medium and become nestled there for us to find. And because we are all humans experiencing this crazy reality, trapped together in the cosmic maze, experiencing the same successes and hardships over and over again throughout history, we find these nuggets and they stick to us. We cling to them and see them as some grand aha moment, as though we've gotten one step closer to discovering some deep truth at the center of our reality. And we develop a deep attachment to the piece of art that provided us this aha moment, even while the person who created it sits unaware that this piece of themselves has guided their hand. And I think that's beautiful. When I read Lord of the Rings and find myself relating to Aragorn's journey through the fear that he'll never live up to the standards of his forebears, when I listen to Smells Like Teen Spirit and feel an angst rise up inside me, or when I watch Old Boy and sit entranced as the camera slowly follows an exhausted, broken man while he beats the shit out of 20-odd men in a hallway, I am content knowing that whatever the intentions of the creator, if those red drapes remind me of the pain of losing a loved one, then that matters. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you made it this far, please consider subscribing, and let me know in the comments what videos you'd like to see next.